Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into the exciting world of system design by exploring how to build a scalable notification service that can handle millions of notifications every day. Whether you are sending emails, SMS, push notifications or in-app messages, delivering information reliably and on time is crucial. We will take a detailed look at architecture, scale estimation, key components and the challenges involved in creating a robust notification system. So let's dive into it. First, let's talk about the functional requirement and the non-functional requirement. Um, and before doing that, I guess it would be a better idea to make a small introduction. So a notification server is a critical component of many modern application. Whether it's an order confirmation email, an SMS alert, or an in-app notification, these systems are responsible for delivering timely and relevant information to users. Today, we will learn how to design an application service that can that scales seamlessly, ensuring high availability, low latency, and reliably and reliable message uh, message delivery. So, imagine a scenario: a user makes an online purchase and they receive an email confirming um, for the order an SMS when the payment is processed or a push notification when the package is shipped or delivered. These interactions enhance the user experience and keep users informed every step on the way. So let's ask ourselves another one, but how do we design a system that handles millions of such notifications without skipping a bit? First, let's go to the requirement gathering to understand how this will work. First, let's focus on the functional requirements. First, we need to have a multi-channel support. Like the service should send notifications through multiple channels like email, SMS, push notifications, and in-app messages. Also, we have multiple notification types. It should handle transactional notifications like order confirmation, promotional notifications, or maybe like discount offers or something like that and system uh, generated alerts like password and receipt messages also we have a, sk a scheduled delivery notifications that can be scheduled for future um, delivery um, think reminders or promotion campaigns something like that also we need to have a rate limiting the system should limit how many promotional messages user receives to prevent spam and lastly, we have should have some sort of retry mechanism because handle failures by retry and notification delivery when is necessary. This is really important. Next, we have um, the scalability. non functional requirement, we need four things. Scalability, low latency, high availability, and reliability. So scalability, hand, we should handle millions of notifications per minute. High availability, uh, low latency, we should deliver notifications as quickly as possible, high availability, um, we should ensure notifications are delivered even during system failures, and reliability, we should guarantee at least once delivery with options for exact, uh, exactly one systematic time. So the, the notifications should be sent only one time, not more than that. And in your system design interview, first, you try to understand what is a service. We did that in the introduction. And you try to understand what is a functional requirement and one that what is a non-functional requirement. And after that, we make some estimation. And these estimations help us to design the system. So let's assume that we have a 50 million daily active user. Okay. Also, the second, we should, um, on average, we can say that each user receives uh, five notifications per day. So we have 20 million notification daily. We should also expect during peak, we might see 1 million within a minute, 1 million notification within a minute. That means I guess 17,000 per second or, or 20,000 per second. I'm, I'm not set sure. Just feel free, feel free to correct me in the comment section below. Also, we assuming a notification size is one, ki uh, one kilobyte, we will need about 50 gigabytes of for user data and uh, 20, um, 250 gigabytes for um, notifications every day. Okay, so um, 
let's go to the high level design right now we have done the most this is the most important step in any system design interview you have to get the functional requirements non-functional requirements and make your own estimation and after that you should go into a high level design of the system okay um let's say that we have two services let's me let's create here like a two uh, let's say the um service one Oh, let's make this. Make it like uh, really small. And we have service two. Okay. Yeah. Let's put them here. Okay. And both of them will send requests to a load balancer, and the load balancer will distribute all the incoming requests okay and um, they will send the requests to um, a notification service notification service let's make this quite wider yeah and the notification service um, will be connected with the two other services the first one it will be um, a user preference service because um, m m m our user might don't we don't have don't want to have like an email services and only want to have SMS services stuff like that. So we should have a user preference um, preference service. Uh huh. And this user preference service should have like should be connected with like a DB and let's make the DB rounded. A DB like a user DB. Okay, and let's make this user DB like that. And the notification service will also be connected with a, a schedule uh, a schedule service. Uh, I guess I, I mispronounced schedule. Uh, yeah, schedule service. And also, schedule service will be connected with the DB. Okay, and also, um, the, the notification service will be connected with like a message queue or notification queue notification queue that is responsible for retrying everything um if you don't understand anything or you you find yourself doesn't understand what's going on just um give me a minute i will try to describe everything and i guess the um, the schedule even the the schedule service i guess it also should be connected with the notification uh, queue and the notification queue will be connected with third parties providers to send um, uh, the the messages. Let's see that we might have uh, four providers. We might have like, um, let me create another one here. Oh no, make this really small. We can say that we have like uh, an email. We have an email here and we might have um, an SMS and we might have also uh, push notifications and lastly we might have like uh, in-app let's make this Okay, and let's uh, get this one. Okay, okay, that, that I guess. Uh, okay, this gates. Oh, that gates good. Okay, so first we have the notification service. Uh, the, uh, this is the entry point for all requests, whether from external services or external uh, systems like an e-commerce platform or internal system alerts. 
it validates the request, checks you the preferences and queues the notifications for delivery. We have the user preference service. This manages uh, user preferences such as um, opt in or opt out choices and preferences channels for notifications. It also ensures um, compliance with rate limits. We have a schedule uh, service. Uh, this one messages notifications that are scheduled for future delivery. It ensures notifications are delivered at the right time. After that, we have the notification queue. Um, this queue like might be Kafka or Ramit, uh, RabbitMQ um, acts as a buffer between the notification service and the delivery process, ensuring scalability by uh, decoupling request submission from uh, delivery. And we have the channel processors like each channel, like we have email, SMS, push, uh, notifications, and in-app, has its own processor that pulls messages from the queue and um, delivers them to the user. These processors handle failures and retries independently. And we need to talk about the data and uh, the data database and storage, um, the storage notifications, content, and user preferences, and the schedule not uh, notifications. Um, all of that um, we can think and uh, also a delivery log, uh, log using co uh, a combination of a relational database and NoSQL database and blob storage. Um, in terms of the, the um, in terms of if you think about um, um, how, how physically it will work, uh, think of it um, a transactional uh, data for a relational database like uh, uh, Postgres uh, or, or MySQL can store like structured data as the user preferences and uh, the, the 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 might we have yeah we can store the user preferences there the um with user preferences might be there also we might have a NoSQL database uh, to store larger volumes of user specific data if the user is too much big um we can we can uh, save in the in the, in in, in a transactional database like the transactional data um, like uh, notifications, logs, and delivery status, and the structure, and and stuff like that. Uh, also, we should use a blob storage, like for notifications contain a large attachment uh, attachments with uh, like emails with images or PDFs. We could use um, S3 uh, or similar services that can store them. Um, so yeah, uh, this is this is uh, the the thing. Yeah, um, I guess we need to talk about. Um, the, the a detailed component breakdown. So let's talk about the notification service for a bit here. The notification service is a core component responsible for handling all incoming notification requests. It um, exposes APIs that various clients use to trigger notifications, whether it's a transactional email, a promotional SMS, or um, a system guaranteed alert. The notification service performs, uh, like I would say, four following key tasks. First, authentication and validation. Uh, it authenticates incoming requests to ensure they originated or originate from author uh, authorized resources. The service then validates the request to confirm it include all necessary information like um, uh, recipient uh, details, message content, and channel information. Second, we have a channel selection and routing based on the notification type and user preferences. The notification service selects the appropriate channels for delivery. It may decide to send a notification via email and push um, for critical updates or SMS for time sensitive alerts. Also, it should integrate into, have integration with the schedule um, for schedule uh, notifications with the notification service uh, interacts with a schedule service uh, to store the notifications for future processing and there is them pushing notification queue uh, once it's validated the notification is pushed to the notification queue for further processing by the uh, appropriate channel processes um, let's next talk about the user preference service the user preference service is all about user control it stores each user preferences regarding notifications channels such as opt, um, uh, opting out of uh, marketing emails or setting specific times to receive notifications. This uh, service perform the following important functions. First, 
opt in and opt out management users can specify which types of notifications they want like uh, to receive um, like opting out uh, promotional emails for example or while allowing um, transactional notifications um, second it works in preferred uh, channels and frequency limits the services keeps track of user specific channel preferences ensuring that users uh, receive notifications through their uh, prefer preferred channels for instance um, a user may prefer sms for urgent alerts but email for uh, other updates for example additionally the service uh, uh, manages rate limits for promotional uh, notifications to prevent spamming users as well also we should have a do not disturb uh, settings like uh, the user can set do not disturb uh, preferences specifying the times during which they do not wish to receive notification this helps in avoiding unnecessary interruption during um, off hours or sleep time oh, i guess also lastly we have a storing and retrying preferences and um, the preference are stored in a nosql database um, uh, like uh, mongodb or dynamodb to facilitate quickly lookups and updates um, the database is optimized for fast reads since this information needs to be accessed every time the application is processed the second thing we have the schedule service let's talk about it in detail the schedule service has um, ha handles notifications that need to be sent to a specific future time such as a reminder appointment confirmation or promotional campaign so let's talk about how it works first we uh, it's storing everything comes with storing a schedule notification and notifications that we are uh, meant for future delivery are stored in um, a time-based database or a NoSQL database that supports efficient querying by time this allows the system to efficiently and effectively manage the retriever of notification that need to be processed at any given time the second step is a polling for due notification. The schedule service continuously pulls database um, for notifications that are due to uh, due for delivery. This polling uh, interval can be adjusted based on the system's requirements. Typically, it checks every second uh, or uh, minute. Uh, efficient polling in is, is is crucial in here to ensure that scheduled notifications are processed promotedly without overwhelming the system. Um, uh, I guess next, we manage delays and tries. Uh, sometimes network issues uh, or other problems may cause a delay in scheduled notifications. The, notific the, schedule, uh, the schedule service is responsible for retrying the delivery or requiring the notification if it fails in, uh, um, in uh, pushing them to the queue. Lastly, moving notifications to the queue. And this is the last step, as you can see here. Uh, moving notifications to the queue once the schedule time arrives, the schedule service moves the notifications to the notification queue for processing by appropriate channel. Next, we have the notification queue. The notification queue acts as a critical buffer that decouples the notification service from the actual delivery process, allowing the system to handle high traffic more effectively and efficiently. The queue offers several key benefits. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really tired today. Okay, oh, where we are. Yeah, it provides, it, it provides a lot of uh, benefits. The first thing, which is the decoupling for scalability, like by using a queue system like Kafka, we can decouple the notification generation from the delivery, allowing both components to scale independently based on their workloads. For instance, if there is a sudden surge in notifications, the notification queue can uh, buffer the request until the channel process are ready to handle them. Next, the delivery guarantees. The queue can be configured to provide different levels of, del of delivery guarantees. For example, we can have like at least one delivery to ensure that every notification is sent at least once, even if duplicates occur in rare scenarios due to retries, this is uh, suitable for promotional or non-critical messages. 
Next, if we have exactly one delivery in scenarios where duplicates are not acceptable, the queue can enforce um, exactly one delivery, which is essential for critical messages such as payment, confirmation, or password receipts. Um, lastly, handle spikes in traffic. Uh, during peak periods, such as flash sales or uh, major promotions, the queue can um, absorb the spike in traffic, allowing the rest of the system to process notifications at management rate. This prevents the system from becoming overwhelmed and ensures a consistent user experience. Lastly, we have the channel uh, processors. Uh, channel processors are specialized components that focus on delivering messages through specific channels. Each processor independently handles its res uh, respective, uh, respective um, channel, offering several advantages. First, we have the email processor. The email processor pulls the messages from the email topic is uh, in the notification queue and sends them via email provides like a SendGrid, Amazon SES, or um, a Mailgun. <sighs> it handles like email uh, formatting like HTML or plain text adds attachments and deals with common errors like bounced emails or invalid addresses. The email processor um, also support custom templates for different types of emails, transaction promotions or system alerts, allowing the system to tailor their messages. The next thing we have SMS processor. The SMS processor uses uh, SMS gateway with like uh, Twilio or uh, Nex Nexmo to send messages. It pulls notifications from the SMS topic, formats them according to the character limit or the uh, the character limits, and handles uh, uh, regional restrictions or network related issues. The SMS processor also performs a number of validations to ensure that messages are not sent to invalid or blacklisted, uh, blacklisted phone numbers, thereby optimizing costs and improving delivery success rates. And the next we have the push notification processor. This processor sends um, notifications through services like Firebase Cloud Managing, or F F uh, FCM, which is Firebase Cloud Management uh, uh, Messaging for Android devices or um, Apple Push Notification Service, uh, APN, for iOS. Um, it handles a failure, uh, failures due to expired device token or maybe devices being offline. And they're trying as, uh, it's it also trying as necessary, uh, as necessary. And the push notification processor also support um, a rich media notifications allowing for um, the inclusion of images, videos, uh, or action buttons. Um, uh, lastly, we have the um, in-app uh, notification processor. In-app notification processor are delivered using uh, technologies like WebSockets or server sent events to active users' uh, sessions. The processor also formats the messages to align with the app, uh, the app's UI for consistent user preferences or experience. Um, it manages uh, real-time updates and ensure notifications are um, are displayed um, immediately within um, uh, within what uh, within the application so making it suitable for instant alerts such as uh, chat messages or uh, system updates um i guess uh, i guess yeah we are going uh, well right now um okay so by decoupling and uh, notifications generation uh, generate uh, gen by decoupling notification generation from actual delivery each channel processor can scale independently, retry failed deliveries, and ensure reliability pro uh, uh, across different channels. Additionally, each uh, uh, processor has its own error handling mechanism tailored to um, a specific channel, which helps providing a robust experience. Um, we can next go to um, a step-by-step -step flow from a request to delivery. So say that um, we have a notification, uh, notification request creation, so an external system such as an e-commerce platform or service one um, or service two generates a notification request and sends it to the, uh, the notification service. It will go to a load balancer to distribute all the incoming requests to let's say we have no a lot of notification services, for example, because we are serving millions of users. Um, this request contains like a detail such as a, res uh, a, uh, uh, a recipient ID, 
uh, notification type channels and message content um, um, then it goes to uh, inject, uh, in, uh, validation process the notification service uh, in, uh, ingests the request authenticated to ensure it's from a trusted uh, source and validates the information such as uh, uh, recipient details a channel information the message and the message content and if any required fields are missing the system rejects the request and return an appropriate error message uh, second we have a user preferences um, the user preference service is queried to retrieve user pr uh, uh, user specific settings like a preferred channels rate limiting and do not disturb preferences this is ensured this ensured that notifications um, Notifications comply with user preferences, avoiding any unwanted messages. Uh, number four, we have a que uh, queuing uh, the notifications. Uh, if the notification is ready to be sent, it's, um, it is pushed to the appropriate notification queue um, to, uh, and, uh, and uh, to ensure the system remains uh, responsive even under heavy loads for notifications that need to be scheduled they are stored in the schedule service until the specified time and we have the channel uh, specific processing we have a channel processor pick uh, pick up messages from the queue and send them to the user through a specific channel handling any issues such as retrier or formatting the specific uh, channels each processor includes uh, custom retry logic to ensure successful delivery even in case of uh, transient uh, failures we might have a monitor and delivery uh, to um, monitor and delivering confirmation like uh, in each channel uh, waits for an acknowledgement from uh, the respective channels provider sms getaway or email service uh, success uh, success on failures are logged in the notification logs table for uh, uh, auditing and further for analysis uh, this data also used to generate delivery reports and insights. Um, so this is a step by step how the system will work. We we might also um, uh, discuss um, some challenges and bottleneck. First, handling failures and retry. Um, notifications delivery may fail due to like a temporary issue such as a network outage or third party service downtime. The system uses a, like a retry mechanism with. Um, exponential uh, back off meaning each retry is detailed by a progressively longer interval uh, uh, um, intervals to prevent overwhelming the system or uh, provider and if all the tries fail and um, undelivered messages are moved to like a, a dead letter queue for manual intervention for um, uh, reprocessing and the dead letter queue, uh, the dead letter queue is uh, pre uh, periodically uh, reviewed by um, administrator to determine if the messages can be um, uh, retried or not. Uh, there are some scalability concerns, like to manage high volumes of notifications components, like a notifications queue and channel processor. Um, the, cha the and channel processor are designed for horizontally scalable, uh, for the horizontal scalability. Adding more instances uh, of uh, these components allows us to manage increased loads uh, effectively. For example, during a high traffic period like uh, flash sales, we can sign up additional um, SMS processor to handle the surge in the messages. The notifications queue itself can be distributed across, can be distributed across multiple nodes, providing a resilient and ensuring it can handle large volumes of, of messages without um, a bottleneck and lastly there is um, reliability concern uh, to ensure reliability data such as user preferences and notification logs is uh, it should be replicated across uh, multiple data centers with provides um, this provides redundancy and helps remain services availability even in case of hardware and network failures Additionally, load balancer distribute oncoming requests across multiple instances of the notification service, preventing any um, single instance from becoming overwhelmed. This system also employs database replication to ensure data consistency and availability with failover mechanism in place to which uh, to backup nodes in case of primary node uh, failure. 
Um, there are some things also to monitoring and logging, like continuous monitoring is essential for scalable notification service tools like um, uh, uh, Gravana are used to monitor system metrics, including uh, delivery success rate, latency, and throughput, and stuff like that. Um, it's alerts or configured to co to notify administration uh, administrator if the key metrics fall outside of the acceptable uh, threshold. There are some also security to use like um, OAuth2 stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I guess um, this is that's it. So design uh, and to wrap up, um, designing a scalable system uh, and scalable notification service is not a simple task. From managing millions of notifications daily to ensure they are delivered reliably and securely, every component needs to work seamlessly by decoupling processes, ensuring redundancy and handling failures effectively. We can create a robust and effective notification system. I hope this video gave you an insight into how to tackle these challenges and design a notification system that scales. And I hope you this, this can help you in your system design interview in the future. So yeah, that's it for this video and see you in the future.